thought I'd bring the beer essentials for this shoot. Before I set up the soft boxes and the tripods and all the paraphernalia that goes with white background field studio work, I prefer just to take an ordinary white piece of Paraspex and use it almost to screen test various candidate specimens. And what I'm looking for here is, well, really like plants with personality. And that's manifest in the sweep of the stem, uh, the condition of the flowers, how the plant almost holds itself. Um, we're looking for that specimen that somehow is the best of that species. Now, a lot of these are just not really quite what I'm looking for. The flowers are not maybe sitting in the same focal plane, so I won't be able to keep everything sharp. Or they're maybe not quite as fresh as they might be. But, ah, right, I think this might be the one that we're looking for. Yeah, that's looking good. We've got uh, a nice arrangement of flowers. They're all just in one focal plane, so I'll be able to keep all of that sharp. And even though it's windy today, remember, for the field studio work, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what the light's like. It doesn't matter if it's windy, unless it's very violent, because all the speed that you need will be delivered by the very short flash durations, down to maybe 4,000th of a second. That's going to take quite a hurricane to uh, not to, to have that frozen sharp. So, I, now I've found my specimen, I'll go and get the gear set up and we'll do the shoot. That's taken a good 15 minutes to get all this set up. And in actual fact, it's a setup phase rather than the photography that's the most time consuming bit of this field studio work. Now, I'm using a, a, an Elinkrum Ranger Quadra system here with soft boxes, but in actual fact, you can get just the same results with a piece of Perspex behind the subject and a piece of envelope stiffener as a diffuser in front of it. The look of the pictures will be just the same. This is just a little bit more convenient if you do a lot of this work. The first thing we need to, to do is to determine the best exposure for the background and the best exposure is where it's 255 in each channel but only just. I want the background to be fully exposed but not so much light spilling forward onto the subject it then becomes difficult to separate subject and background. In order to do this we need to move the front light source out of the way first because all we're doing is concentrating on getting that background pure white flash powered up and I'm just going to guess the exposure at the outset. I've got my sync speed set at 160th and we'll start off with the flash power quite low and f20. Now the histogram tells me that although part of the background is blinking therefore fully overexposed another part of it is not quite there yet so we'll Increase the power by a third of a stop in the flash. Try that again. And this time, just that third of a stop made all the difference, so it's showing pure white for the whole background, but of course the front of the subject is a bit underlit. So now we've got the exposure for the background sorted out, we just need a front light so we can swing this background. And it's perfect. The background's blinking away, so it's properly overexposed. And the front of the subject is very nicely lit. And when I pull it up to 100%, there's lots and lots of detail there. Now I'm hand-holding because the flash duration is so short that I don't need to have the camera on a tripod to get a sharp picture. And even if it's a little bit windy, as it is at the moment, the subject will still be very, very sharp. <laughs> 